Hey ladies, <clears throat> so hopefully you can hear me um, all right and my audio is working good, uh, we'll see. So I wanted to talk to y'all today a little bit about intuitive eating. Um, I tend to not get to talk so much, or choose I guess, not to talk so much about dieting and exercise and things like that because more of you that are joining my community are wanting to start with or needing to start with, you know, mindset and beliefs and grief in general before even embarking on um, addressing diet and exercise concerns that you have. So I hope that makes sense. But I wanted to share a little bit today. Seriously, this cat is scratching on my paper. I wanted to share a little bit today about um, some more about um, intuitive eating because I feel like it's a it's a misunderstood concept. So I'm going to share with y'all today um, some, I guess, rules of intuitive eating, if you want to call them rules. So if this is your first time joining me, my name is Molly Howes. I am the founder of HowsYourHealth.com. I am a health coach and a grief mentor, and I specialize in helping grieving women take really good care of themselves. So today, specifically, we're going to talk a little bit more some health and wellness stuff, um, as opposed to, you know, mindset and um, grief in general. So I'm going to go ahead and just um, go through the list here of some of the rules, if you will. Like I said, it's more like guidelines, maybe. So the first thing with intuitive eating is that you stop thinking in terms of diets. So it seems like we know this, you know, we know that we're not supposed to be restrictive. Um, we're and thinking about in terms of like, have you ever said, I'm having a cheat day? or I cheated on my diet, or I fell off the wagon. Those are all terms that doesn't, it doesn't seem like it should be that, um, it doesn't seem like it should be that um, damaging, but it really is when we think in those terms and we kind of guilt ourselves thinking that we are failures in some way, that we have failed some sort of diet. So, Hey, Colleen, I see that you joined. Can you hear me all right? I just want to make sure that my audio is okay because I sometimes have problems with my audio. Okay, so the next thing um, about intuitive eating is paying attention to hunger and paying attention to fullness. So again, it's where we're, we're paying attention to our bodies. Um, I recently did a video about mindfulness. Well, thinking of this in terms of mindfulness, in eating. So thinking about, you know, paying attention to and not letting yourself get too hungry so then you devour everything, um, but also paying attention to um, as you're eating, eat slowly and mindfully so that you can tell when you're getting full and that you will stop even though there might still be food on your plate, right? So um, I'm going to get into this too because um, thank you, Erin. I appreciate that. Um, we, well, I, I just forgot what I was going to say. We, um, well, I'm just going to keep going because I forgot what I was going to say. Okay, so the next thing is food is not good or bad. Food does not have a mor any morality. Um, I mean, we know that it is an unhealthy choice to choose to eat an entire cake, you know, or to, um, to drink a gallon of, of Cokes, something like that. Like, we are aware that those things are not healthy but food in and of itself is not good or bad. And so the same thing with that diet mentality, thinking of food in terms of, well, this is good and this is bad, it's shaming ourselves, it's guilting ourselves, right? And it's putting these restrictions on ourselves that we're gonna wind up um, being feeling so, feeling so deprived that we give up and we just binge, okay? Um, okay. So the next thing is to ignore the food police. And so, like I said, these food police, is, it's usually it's in your head. You know, it's the little voice in your head that's telling you this food is bad or I'm cheating, right? The, the little nagging voice. But it can also be outsiders, people that you say, well, I'm going on a diet. And then they look at you and say, well, then should you be eating that, you know, donut? And so you have, you know, that outside influence as well. So, but choosing to ignore that because food is food, right? And we make choices. And when we start to eat intuitively, we start to recognize what does and doesn't work for us. 
because if I say I'm going to just completely cut out sugar, then the first thing I'm going to do is crave sugar, right? Okay. Um, the next part of intuitive eating is enjoying your food. So it's meant to satisfy. Honestly, think about all of the amazing foods that, um, that grow naturally, not even the stuff that, you know, we combine together to make bread, but think about all of the, all of the things that God provided us with that taste delicious. He gave us these foods to enjoy, right? So we are meant to enjoy our food. Um, so when you put yourself on a restrictive diet of just bland, you know, chicken and rice and broccoli or whatever, whatever it is that you've, you know, decided is your diet food. Um, I know like for my mom, it was like tuna fish and then like um, rice cakes with, I don't even know, cottage cheese. I don't remember. It was like such a, a boring, bland diet. And so, of course, it was like you weren't, you know, not motivated to stay on it. And you might lose a few pounds, but then as soon as you get off your diet, what do you do? You binge on a whole pizza. Um, okay. So the next one would be coping with your emotions. So when we talk a lot about emotional eating and actually emotional eating um, is the topic for December in my membership service in the self-care success um, membership program. We're gonna talk more about that in December with emotional eating um, and working through your emotions in other ways besides eating your emotions. Um, and let me know if that's something that's familiar to you. I have a feeling that more of us than not tend to be emotional eaters. Um, so finding ways to cope with your emotions instead of using food to suppress your emotions or to make yourself feel better. Um, the next one would be loving your body as it is, loving your body for what it can do for you and um, for the, just the, you know, the fact that you have a body. So there's a saying, you can't hate yourself thin. And so if you look in the mirror and you hate what you see, you're not going, that's actually not going to help you change your appearance to something that you like. Um, because there's like there's stress involved in that and that self that feeling of self worth. Um, it's just it just sabotages you. Uh, let's see a couple more. So exercise exercise for strength and exercise for health benefits, not exercising for weight loss, not exercising as a punishment for something you ate. Does that make sense. Um, I think that's that's pretty self explanatory and then seeking out good nutrition for for your health. Um, food can be our medicine. Food can also be our drug, right? But if we are working on eating food that nourishes us and makes us feel good, then it becomes our medicine instead of our drug. Um, so I do wanna mention here, um, because it's very challenging to get all of our nutrients from the food that we eat and also our lives are busy and we don't always have time to prepare all of the meals and get in all of our vitamins and everything. I did want to mention, um, I haven't talked about this in a while, but if you are interested in learning more about the supplements that I use, um, then I want to you to drop a comment and let me know that you want more information because for one, um, I take lots of supplements that I absolutely believe in and um, if you haven't already like read in the guidelines, it's, it, it's um, all over the place, but um, the products that I use come from Advocare. And some of my favorite supplements are like um, the collagen, the fish oils, the probiotics. There's, there's so many things that I use to supplement um, my diet. And I don't say diet as in dieting, I mean diet as in the food I eat. So if you're interested in more information about that, and also, um, recently, because so many of you are in Canada, recently AdvoCare became available in Canada. And so if you are interested in getting a discount on products, or if you are interested in being one of the first distributors um, in Canada, that's also something that um, I can get you more information on as well. So I want to put that out there. Okay, so let's see. So I want to recap real quick. Um, Share with me in the comments, if you're watching uh, the replay, share with me in the comments questions that you have about intuitive eating um, or aha moments, maybe something that I said that made you realize that intuitive eating is not just a free-for-all. That's what I was going to say. Aha, it came back to me. 
it's not a free for all. It doesn't mean I'm going to just eat whatever I want and not worry about trying to be as healthy as I can be. Intuitive eating has more to do with paying attention to your body, paying attention to your hunger and paying attention to the food you eat that makes you feel good. Right. And not eating things that, you know, are going to make you feel sick later. That you're going to regret it. But in that moment, it just tasted good. And that's a whole nother like emotional eating, binge eating and, and those sort of things. That is not intuitive eating. So I'm really proud that that came back to me. So let me know if you have any questions or aha moments of any of the information I've mentioned here real quickly about intuitive eating. Um, those of you who are in this group that already use um, Advocare, there's several of you. Share your favorite products in the comments. Let, let me know. I could go on for hours, but I'm not going to do that today. Just if you want more information, I will um, chat with you individually. And so if you want more information, comment more info um, in the comments and I'll shoot you a message and we can chat. So those are the things that I wanted to cover really quickly about intuitive eating. And like I mentioned, so the membership that I have started as of right now, it's still $10 a month. And um, in December, the price will be going up. So if you sign up now, you'll always only pay $10 a month. But if you wait till the price goes up, it'll be more. Um, the topics that we're covering right now, there are some nutrition information in there, which is really good. Um, that's some bonus material. There's some tutorials about some of the methods that I use with my clients. And then the first lesson that's for this month is on beliefs. Um, and I believe we need to start with beliefs because that's where everything spawns from. How we, um, how we feed ourselves, how we treat ourselves, and how we deal with everything is based on our beliefs. So that's the first uh, lesson for this month. And I'm currently working on November's um, content is going to be the basics of self-care, because obviously this is my self, self-care is my jam. So the basics of self-care is what's coming up for November. But then, like I said, in December, we will be discussing um, emotional eating and some really good tools to help you break the cycle if you struggle with emotional eating or binge eating, things like that. So I am looking to see, I don't see any comments. Um, so I'm going to hop off of here. And I'll just check for comments um, after this post. If you guys are watching the replay and you have comments or questions, I'll try to keep an eye out. The Facebook notifications have been really wonky lately. So I'm not sure if you're getting notifications, but I'm not getting notifications like I should be. So hopefully they get their act together here pretty soon and we um, and I can like not miss anything. So let me know if, um, if that's been a problem for you too. Okay, that's all I have for y'all today. And um, happy Tuesday. It is Tuesday, yeah. And um, we'll chat later. I love y'all.